So what's going on guys, Cades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best Glavier PvE build in Lost Ark. So in this guide I will show you what abilities and awakening skill you want to get. Then I will explain what are the best engravings, gems and even cards to use for end game content. And then lastly I will show you the best gameplay and even which stats you need to allocate for PvE. So you would be able to get the best results and highest damage possible and much more. So no matter how low or high level or gear score your character is, you can easily use this build and follow the step by step guide. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So Glavier is a spear building martial artist. He is very fast paced class that uses two different weapons. His main gameplay revolves around having to charge three bars and then swapping to the second weapon to get a huge damage boost and this class has a really good counter attack skills as well. And then at the end game we will be using the pinnacle engraving which will give us everything you want for a glavier. So you get a buff for the movement and attack speed, increased crit chance and crit damage and it even increases your flat damage and much more. So this is by far the best engraving that will give our class the highest damage possible. So if you are looking for the best leveling, raiding, chaos dungeon or any other pv content build then this is the one for you. Ok so now let's move over to the build itself and these are the skills you want to have. So then for the first ability we have the wheel of blades and this time we use just 4 levels to unlock the excellent mobility and then for your rune you want to get the judgment. Then for the second ability we have the flash kick and we only spend 4 levels to select the excellent mobility. Then for the next one we have the vault skill and we use 4 more levels to unlock the excellent mobility and then for your gems and runes you don't want to select anything. Then for the fourth ability we have the half moon slash and we use 10 levels to select the flurry expertise final decision and blade tornado then for your gems you want to get both types so one for cooldown reduction and the second one for damage increase and then lastly for your rune you want to get the conviction then for the next one we have the chain slash ability and this time we only use 4 levels to unlock the swoop tripod then moving over to the next ability which is called the cutting wind and we use 4 more levels to select the quick preparation and then lastly for your rune you want to get the wealth then for the 7th ability we have the raging dragon slash and we use 10 levels to unlock the quick preparation, quick slash and awaken. Then for your gems you want to get both types, so one for cooldown reduction and the second one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the overwhelm. So then moving over to the next skill which is called the shackling blue dragon and we use 10 more levels to select the quick preparation, blitz and critical spear. Then for your gems you want to get the cooldown reduction gem and then lastly for your rune you want to get the focus. Then moving over to the next one which is the spiraling spear and for this ability we only want to select the bleed rune. So then for one of the last abilities we have the chest of destruction and we use 10 levels to unlock the weak point detection, spear chip trust and air ripping trust. Then for your gems you want to get both types, so one for cooldown reduction and the other one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then for the next ability we have the starfall pounds and we use 7 levels to select the weak point detection and quick preparation. Then for your gems you want to get both types, so one for cooldown reduction and the other one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you don't want to select anything. And then for the last and final ability we have the red dragon's horn and we use our last 7 levels to select the quick preparation and spear of destruction. Then for your gems you want to get both types, so one for cooldown reduction and the other one for damage increase. And then lastly for your rune you want to get the gale wind. Then as well after level 50 for your awakening skill you want to get the storming red dragon. And then on top of all this focus on equipping as high item level gear as you can. And then at the end game you should have 1250 specialization and 350 swiftness. But if you haven't got to this point yet then try to have around 80% stats into specialization and 20% stats into swiftness. Ok so then the way I would recommend to upgrade this build is at level 50, you will get around 250 points. So this is how your build should look like. But then by doing more and more endgame content you will get more points. And at the absolute endgame this is how your build should look like with all the 400 skill points. So at the start you use the 252 point build. 
and then by leveling up and completing quests you will get more points. So just keep on improving your skills and getting higher tier runes and gems as well. So then moving over to the engravings and you want to get the pinnacle. This engraving is the best one by far because it will give you everything you want for a glavier so you get a buff for movement and attack speed, increased crit chance and crit damage and it even increases your flat damage. So then for the second engraving we have the mass increase and this is another great option for increased damage if you have plenty of swiftness to negate the 10% attack speed penalty. Then the next one is called the keen blunt weapon and because our build has more than 60% crit rate getting increased crit damage will come very handy to increase our overall damage. Then for the fourth engraving you want to get the awakening. This will allow you to cast your powerful awakening skill more often but if you prefer a different option like the raid captain or mass increase then those are decent options as well. Then the next one is called the grudge and this is more advanced engraving that is recommended for tier 3 content. This grudge is the most efficient engraving against mobs and you will get your damage increased but in return you will take 20% more damage. So when you get to the very end game content which is called the tier 3 then get this engraving and before using it get it to at least level 2 because at level 1 this engraving is not that efficient. And then for the last one we have the curse doll and this is a significant attack power increase at the cost of 25% healing penalty. This penalty can be offset by paying more attention on dodging red AOE circles and by using healing potions more often. So then in a quick summary, I would recommend to get the top 3 engravings first and then the bottom 3. And then last but not the least let's move over to your cards and you want to get the Armin, Syria, Solas, King Tarrain, Carmen and Delane Armin. In general these cards are an endgame system for maximizing your character so you don't have to get them right away but these specific cards will optimize your damage output in PvE even more. I did bunch of testing for this build and this was the best and most optimized card set. Ok so then moving over to the gameplay and if you have played this class while leveling you will be very familiar with the skills so I will just try to give you a short description. So then for the first two abilities we have the flash kick and chain slash and these are your main basic mobility skills. Then the next ability is called the vault which is the best skill for a counter attack as it has a quick execution and low cooldowns. Then for the next three skills we have the raging dragon slash, wheel of blades and half moon slash and these are your main damage abilities. Then for the next ability we have the shackling blue dragon and this is by far the best debuff skill in the game. We will be using this at the start of our rotation to increase our overall damage. Then the next ability is called the cutting wind and this is a gauge gainer. It works very well in our rotation for some good DPS. Then the next ability is called the spiraling spear and this is our bleeding ability that once we hit the enemy because of our rune selection he will be taking damage over time. Then moving over to the next one which is the dragon scale defense and this is a quick and easy defense that will give you a shield as long as you hold the skill. Then for one of our last abilities we have the chest of destruction and starfall pounds and both of these skills are really good dps dealers that most importantly will give us 100% crit rate because of our tripod selection. Then for the last normal ability we have the red dragon's horn and this is our highest damage skill which on top of all this will give us a 100% crit chance as well. And then last but not the least for your awakening skill we have the storming red dragon and from both of our options this is the highest damage awakening skill that scales with attack speed so if you use this awakening while your character is using the blue skill weapon then you will be able to perform the awakening 0.5 seconds faster so this is a simple check that you should know for the best results possible. Ok so then let's take a closer look at your best skill rotation and I have split this one in two parts so it would be easier to understand. So the highest damage rotation is the first of all while using the red weapon, use the starfall pounds, then spiraling spear, then red dragon's horn and then the four headed dragon. Then from here we switch to the blue weapon and when using the blue weapon we activate the shackling blue dragon, half moon slash, cutting wind, wheel of blades, raging dragon slash, vault and we finish it off with a chain slash. Then from here we go back again to the red weapon and start the rotation all over again. So let's see what we did in this rotation. But first while using the red weapon we use few skills to get our identity meter to the max. Then we switch to the blue weapon and this is where the real damage and rotation starts. So we use the shackling blue dragon to debuff our enemies and then we do big damage with rest of our skills. 
as this class is very quick, most of your skills you'll be able to use in just few seconds. So I would recommend to keep on practicing the start of the rotation in the training round. But after a few minutes of practice, you'll be able to do crazy amount of damage. So now in my last and final conclusions for this build. If you're a player that cares about using the best of the best, it's by far the best setup that you can have for the Glavier. Then as well remember that the specialization is your main stat and swiftness is secondary. So your main stat prioritization goes on specialization. And then lastly keep on using the counter attack skill. So in the end game dungeons whenever the boss lights up blue this is your time for an easy counter attack and that's about it. So I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good lost art pv classes that you would like to see in the next video then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next video. So take it easy. Peace.